Looking back through film history, there are lots of movies that were very nearly made that could have been incredible. George Miller's Justice League Immortal, for instance, or Hitchcock's Kaleidoscope, or Guillermo del Toro's, well, Honestly, any number of his cancelled projects, really. The poor guy. However, not all cancelled movies are cancelled the same. Sometimes, because artists can be inspired by things that were never completely finished, bits of those films, ranging from characters to concepts to sometimes just the entire goddamn script, can be fished out of the trash and stuck together in one big paper mache mess to create shiny new projects entirely. It's not ripping off if the thing you're reusing doesn't actually exist, right? I'm Ash from What Culture, and these are nine cancelled movies that secretly lived on. 9. Batman Unchained The now infamous planned fourth movie in the Burton Schumacher series, Batman Unchained went by the completely fabricated title Batman Triumphant for a good long while, before being sliced up and handed out between a few of our favourite properties instead. The film in its original form would have featured Batman being mentally tortured by Scarecrow as he teams up with Harley Quinn. Scarecrow would have used his fear gas to make Batman hallucinate his past villains, including the one and only Jack Nicholson as the Joker, making the Dark Knight have to overcome his fear by karate chopping the s*** out of a load of bad guys. The scarecrow elements of the plot, and indeed the idea of the Joker appearing as a hallucination, were reused for the Batman Arkham Knight game, and Batman Begins took on some elements of the film's ideas of fear and then conquering it. Even more specifically, the scriptwriter planned to have Bruce Wayne travel to Bali at the end of the movie, where he'd learn that there was a cave full of bats that monks would enter to show that they had conquered their fear. In the Unchained script, Bruce would enter and bats would swarm all around him as the final shot, an image that Nolan later used in Batman Begins. 8. Spider-Man 4 In the wake of Spider-Man 3's relative failure, you'd think Sony wouldn't have wanted to make a follow-up with Sam Raimi. But they absolutely did. The original plan was to have Raimi return and write another sequel including Mysterio and the Vulture, as well as The Shocker, Prowler and Rhino, but creative discussions with the studio threatened the May 6, 2011 release date. Sony were unwilling to move it back, so Raimi dropped out when he couldn't meet the deadline. One plot element from the original script from the sequel would have seen Peter Parker cheat on and abandon Mary Jane and their child, which is absolutely wild, and of course Sam Raimi did not agree with it. This is inevitably what caused the discussions over their story, and the cancellation of the film entirely off the back of it. That plot was then picked up for Peter B. Parker's story in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, though it was softened slightly as the divorce was put down to Peter's midlife crisis instead. Interestingly enough, though, it its seeds to Raimi's abandoned Spider-Man 4. 7. Ghostbusters Hellbent Whilst we are finally getting a true follow-up to Ghostbusters 2 after way too long, there have been lots of discussions about having a straight sequel starring the original cast over the years. For a while, that sequel was going to be Ghostbusters Hellbent from a script by Dan Aykroyd, which he developed in the 1990s. It was an odd film, with the crew teleported to an alternate version of Manhattan inventively called Manhelton, where everything is a hellish version of their universe's originals and the devil also hangs out there too. Ghostbusters, the video game came about instead, which rescued elements of Aykroyd's script from the development bin. It also used some of the elements that Aykroyd had wanted to include in the original films too, like Ivo Shandor as Goza, but the majority of the game itself is very much an adapted version of Hellbent. 6. Die Hard Troubleshooter It's not entirely fair to say that Die Hard 3 was cancelled, but it went through so many different iterations before it became Die Hard with a Vengeance that it might as well have been. And even that was actually based on a script that was supposed to be a Lethal Weapon movie. Before that decision was made, however, Die Hard 3 would have seen John McClane on a Caribbean cruise ship and would have been titled Troubleshooter, which makes it sound like he'd hung up his police badge to become an IT consultant. It was abandoned when the studio realised it would be way too much like Under Siege. Clearly, they were not that concerned with copying Under Siege, though, since 20th Century Fox later went back to the Die Hard Troubleshooter script when they were looking for a way to capitalise on the success of Speed with a sequel. That sequel's development proved to be difficult, too, and instead of relying on one of their new suggested ideas, they simply went back to the cruise ship idea. They might not have had Keanu Reeves, but they had a ready-made new John McClane wannabe played by Jason Patrick. The results were predictably unsurprising. 5. Matilda To this day, 
day, Leon the Professional is easily Luc Besson's best film. It is profound and complex and has some truly brilliant action sequences, which helped announce Besson and his protege Olivia Megaton as mainstream breakouts in 1994. On the back of it, Besson wanted to make a sequel called Matilda, which would have starred Natalie Portman as an older and more mature version of the character from Leon, who would be working as a cleaner. They necessarily needed to wait until Portman got older. But then her fame got in the way and Besson's clash with his film company, who we left to form his own studio, meant he couldn't retrieve the rights for a sequel. Though it was cancelled, Olivier Megaton revealed in 2011 that Matilda lived on as another film instead, Columbiana. That film, starring a young Zoe Saldana, focused on a young cleaner who goes to war with the drug cartel as revenge for the murder of her family when she was a child. It is very much the film that Matilda was supposed to be. 4. The Malcolm Show Obviously, we got to see The Truman Show on the big screen, because Peter Weir and Jim Carrey teamed up and made the beautiful existential comedy drama that proved Carrey could actually act after years of pleasant mugging to the camera. But before we got to that movie, an alternate version called The Malcolm Show was written by Andrew Nichol. It was a far more serious movie, and a sci-fi thriller rather than the softer version Weir would eventually sanction after an almighty 12 rewrites. Clearly taken with the idea of a depressing future where people would be enthralled by watching manufactured life 24-7, how bloody apt his observations were, eh? Nicole kept his original idea for The Malcolm Show locked away in his brain box for later. He channeled the darker elements of that original story into his portrait of a dystopian, tech-obsessed world in Gattaca. Strangely enough, that ended up coming out before The Truman Show and flopped hard at the box office. So maybe Peter Weir was right after all. 3. True Lies 2 in a strange quirk of fate, this point on True Lies' abandoned sequel comes hot on the news that there's going to be a True Lies TV show on Disney+. Plus. But if not for 9-11, we might have had a continuation of the story a lot sooner. James Cameron was planning to make the sequel around 2002, but he put the plans on ice because of the September 11th, 2001 attacks on New York. He fairly expressed his belief that terrorism, which would have been central to the plot, shouldn't be taken lightly. In the strangest example of these cancelled projects living on, the True Lies sequel that was meant to be ended up existing as a plot point in another movie entirely. In Tom Arnold's The Kid and I, he plays a fictional character based on himself called Bill Williams, a man who starred in True Lies and who is approached by a billionaire whose son is a massive fan of the film. He wants to make an identical follow-up to it so that his son, who has cerebral palsy and wishes he could be in True Lies, could star alongside him. Q hijinks as Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis both also cameo as themselves. 2. Masters of the Universe 2 As anyone who watched and loved the original Masters of the Universe unironically will tell you, and yes, that person is me, the ending teased a sequel that never materialised, leaving Hollywood to try in vain to make a new version instead. There was, of course, originally supposed to be a sequel following up on that stinger. Canon Films had planned to make it whilst also making Spider-Man, but the studio then ran into money problems, aka finding out that they had none, because Masters of the universe flopped at the box office. The plan for the sequel would have seen Skeletor return after saying he would be back at the end of the first movie. Despite the fact that most could have predicted that Masters of the Universe was never going to be any good, Cannon ploughed on with the sequel and spent a whopping $2 million on pre-production. So rather than wasting that money, they just made another film instead, reworking the script and reusing what they had done so far. The result was Cyborg, which starred Jean-Claude Van Damme and which was written in just one weekend. In similarly tight-fisted fashion, the film was made for an additional $500,000 over just 23 days. Remarkably, it made around $10 million at the box office and inspired two sequels, so the decision not to scrap Masters of the Universe 2 proved entirely inspired. 1. Superman Lives Ah, Superman Lives. Warner Brothers lost their enthusiasm for this movie despite how very close it got to being made as they believed it couldn't be profitable, then further compounded that by spending $30 million on not making it too. Kevin Smith's story goes that he was brought in to write Superman Lives by hairdresser-turned-film producer John Peters, and the 
producer insisted he use some of his own ideas too. That included a scene in which he wanted to see Superman do battle with a giant spider-like creature called a Thanagarian snare beast. Smith obliged and some concept art was even drawn up. In the end though, Smith's draft was rejected, probably because it included terrible ideas like giant spider monsters, and the production moved on to Tim Burton's version instead. But Peters wouldn't be foiled entirely, because he was also producing Wild Wild West, and much to Smith's amusement, that film included the hero doing battle with, you guessed it, a giant spider. But it was clear that Peters had got his own way despite Superman Lives cancellation. Good for you, Peters. You battle those giant spiders. And that's our list. What is your favorite cancelled movie that has been sneakily brought to life? Share your findings in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Make sure to subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this. And don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. Thanks for watching.